Hello YouTube! Welcome to the third installment of my aquarium controller series, Digital Thermometers. For temperature monitor, I choose to use the cheap, reliable, and easy to find DS18B20 digital temperature sensor. You can find these both as discrete parts and pre-wired into a waterproof cylinder. Links in the description. The beauty of these sensors is the one wire bus. You technically need at least two wires, and preferably three, but one signal wire can control your whole army of sensors. This means that you can run one cable and just pigtail off a sensor into each tank as needed. The circuit's easy. Give it 5 volts, ground, a 4.2K pull-up resistor between the signal and the 5 volts, then connect the signal line to the digital pin on your Adreno. I'm using pin 5. So, to wire these up I need to take some measurements. The first sensor is built into the electronics compartment. Then I need a line that goes out over the sump for the base air temperature sensor. From there, it needs to go up into the canopy and measure the temperature there, and then drop a sensor into both the reef tank and the planted tank. So I need a 7.5 and, and a 6.5 and foot line, and the waterproof sensors came with 3 feet already attached. You need at least the 3 conductor cables for these runs. There's very little current, so headphone lines work great, that's what I'm using. Cat 3 or phone cable can be a good option also. To keep them modular, I'm using keyed 3-pin wafer connectors. This is a how-to video, so let me show you how I attach one of these connectors. First, I like to test the connector and mark the negative side. This way I know where to push it in the pins later. The crimp pins usually come attached to a long strip when you buy them. I use my clippers to liberate three of them from the connector. Place the pin into the correct slot of the crimping tool with a spring tab extending out and pointing to the front of the jaws. Then ratchet down just enough to hold it in place. Make sure the insulation is stripped off the last eighth of an inch of wire. These came pre-stripped. Then push the wire into the back of the crimp pin just until it starts to reach the spring tab. When you have the wire where it needs to be, squeeze the tool to crimp it in place. Check your pin to make sure it's firmly attached. Then repeat for the remaining wires and pins. To make it neat and sturdy, I add some heat shrink tubing. I find one just large enough to fit over the plug. And then a smaller one a bit larger than my cable. Then I thread them both onto the cable. Locate the pin on the black negative wire and push it into the hole in your connector adjacent to the mark you made earlier. You will notice some holes in the top of the connector. The pins go in with a large spring tab facing away from these and the small one towards it. Push in the pin until the small tab fills the hole and locks the pin in place. The yellow signal wire goes in the middle. and finally the red positive wire in the last remaining slot. Now I pull the smaller heat shrink tube up to cover the wires and use a heat gun to shrink it in place. I wrestle the larger piece about a quarter of the way up onto the connector and shrink it in place also.
For the pin headers, use a small piece of strip board cut to be about three strips wide. The pins are placed on here and then soldered in place, and the wires are attached to the end. Here's the completed sensor tree, constructed using these techniques and the measurements taken before. Now to test the sensor we just wired up. In addition to the sensor, we need a male header, breadboard, three jumper wires, and an Adreno. I'll use a spare Uno for this. Note which pin corresponds to the side of the sensor marked to be ground. Using the jumper wires, connect five volts to the opposite pin. Connect the ground to marked pin, and then connect pin five on the Adreno to the center pin. Now connect the sensor to the pin header. Lastly, connect a 4.2K resistor between five volts and the center signal pin. I'll be using Adreno's online cloud tool to manage my code. Adreno Create requires a browser plugin and you'll need to sign up for an account. Like the standard client, it's free, but it offers better portability and backups, and it's easy to share projects with others like you. Once logged into the web editor, I select my board and the port from the dropdown. For this project, I'll be using the Dallas Temperature Library. To find it and the sample code, click on the Libraries, and then select Library Manager. In the manager, search for Dallas Temperature. When you find it, click the star to add it to your favorites and then click Done. Now you should see the library in your favorites tab. Expand it and open the one wire search example sketch. This sketch will find the sensor's address, which we'll need for later. Upload the example sketch to your Adreno. and then open the serial monitor by clicking on the link to the left. We get gobbledygook at first. This is because the sketch sets the serial baud to 115,200. So we need to match that in the serial monitor. Once that's done, the data looks much better. Now we see the address found for the new sensor we just wired. Copy that and save it for later. Go back to Libraries, and this time select the Single Sketch. Copy it into your project folder. We'll need to make some modifications to this. Paste the address we just found to the inside thermometer parameter. I also open up a new Note tab and paste the address in there so I have easy access to it later. Copy the inside thermometer line and comment it out. Then above, we replace the undefined array declaration with this. Now change the value of the bus pin to 5. That's the pin we're connected to. Finally, save and upload the sketch to your Adreno. In the serial monitor, we should see the proper temperature displayed. Note, this sketch sets the baud back to 9600, so adjust that if necessary. And that's it! You can see the temperature is displayed properly. The sensor and test code is working. I use code quite similar to this example sketch in my main controller program. Let's take a look at that. I include the one wire in Dallas temperature libraries and set the sensor pin to 5. Then I set the precision to 9 and tie the one wire bus to the Dallas temperature library. Here I set up the device address arrays for each of the DS18B20 thermometers. We briefly get a look at the code for serial communication with the Pi in the time management routines. I'll cover that in a later video. The report temp function runs once a minute. 
It gathers the temperature readings from each sensor and stores them in an array named Last Temperature. Then it reports out to the serial bus with the data for the logging, using my debug function. The temp triggers function is the actual mover and shaker. It runs every five minutes and controls the heaters and fans. The temperature goals for the aquariums are set in the global variables for use here. They can be adjusted by serial commands sent from the Raspberry Pi or the Adreno serial monitor. The canopy fan routine checks the pin state to see if the fan is currently on. If so, it compares the last temperature reading in the canopy to the goal. If the temperature is lower, it turns the fan off. If the fan was off, it checks to see if it's too hot in the canopy now. If so, it turns the fan on. If any action is taken, it reports out over serial to log the event. The base fan routine is identical, except that it uses the base sensor and fan relay. Both of these use reef tank temperature goal as the target temperature. Heater controls are also quite similar. Read the relay state. If on and the tank is warm enough, turn the heater off. If off and the tank is too cool, turn the heater on. Another global variable you see here is the temperature delta, such as temp delta plant. This gives me a variable to adjust should the heaters or fans be switching on or off too often. The value is added or subtracted from the goal to give a window where no action is taken. For example, if set to 1 and the goal is set to 78, it won't turn on the heater until the temp drops below 77, and then it'll turn off when it gets above 79. A link to this code as it stands so far is in the description in the doobly-doo. Here it is in action. Please like and subscribe to see more like this, and I'd love to hear your comments below. Until next time, thanks for watching.